Good morning to our Anointed Ground Church family and our listening audience. I am Co-Pastor Rees of Anointed Ground Church, and I'm here to share the Perfecting Class lesson for you today. Today is Sunday, November the 22nd, 2020, and we give God glory and praise for the Perfecting Class lesson today. So as we go forth this morning, let us enter into a word of prayer. So Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus to say thank you for this word that will be shared today. We know, God, that the word will be a blessing because your word is always a blessing to your people. So, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit will teach this lesson today through me and to be able to give the glory and the praise to Almighty God. So, Father, we thank you for the word, for this perfecting class. Let it go forth and come up a hundredfold in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's title of the lesson is Moses' Audacious request. And when we look at that title, audacious, Moses's audacious request. Audacious means extremely bold or willing to take a risk. So Moses was willing to take a risk with the request that he was going to be asking of God. Now let's look at the lesson text. It comes from Exodus chapter 33 verses 12 through 23. The related scriptures, Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 7, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and John chapter 1, verses 14 through 18, and Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. And the golden text reads as follows, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And this comes from Exodus chapter 33, verse 20. Now today's aim is, the facts us to see what Moses was asking of God and how he answered. The principle is to realize that spending time with God helps us pray more in line with his will. And the application is to make seeing God's glory, the driving ambition of our life. Now we know that Moses just coming through a time with the Israelite people because the Israelite, Israelite people were practicing idolatry And they were doing all kinds of sinful things. And Moses had to reprimand them. He had to punish them for their actions. Because there can be nothing above God. So after the Israelites were punished. And they became very repentful. And they had a repentive attitude. We see now that the Lord is going to be able to help them again. Now, the Lord was going to help them again because of their leader, Moses' prayer. Moses' was interceding on behalf of the people, and God listened to Moses and helped the Israelites. The Lord was going to send an angel to go before the Israelites to drive out all of their enemies because they were getting ready to go into the promised land. But he wanted to make sure that all of the enemies would be gone. So that angel was going to go in the presence for them and to be able to drive out all of the enemies. Now we thank God for Moses because Moses had spent much time in the presence of God, much time in prayer, getting instructions for his people. Moses knew God and he knew his ways because of the amount of time he spent with God. Moses would have special talks with God about the people. When Moses and the congregation would be in the premises nearby each other, Moses would always take his own tent and pitch it outside the camp far away from the people. And as he would do this, he would call on the name of God and he would be in the tent and then he would call the people to come forth. Now they would come out individually to this temporary tent and they would wait outside in order for Moses to be able to go into the tent. Now every man would stand outside his own individual tent and watch and look at Moses go into the tent. Now when Moses would go into the tent, a pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the door of the tent and the Lord would talk with Moses. And all the people would stand and watch and they saw the pillar of cloud stand at the tent and then they would rise up 
and they are start to worship. And every man would do, th do this at his own tent door. Then when Moses finished talking with God, he would get up and go back into the midst of the camp with the people. Now this would bring us to our lesson for today. Moses had some concerns that he would like uh, to ask God and some things he wanted God to answer some of the questions that he had. His first question or request made to God was, who was going to go with him? Who was God going to send with him as he led the people to the promised land? Moses knew that this would be a great task and he knew he needed some help with this task. He knew there would be challenges and concerns along the way as he was leading the people. Even though all his speakings with God in previous times, this subject never came up about who would be there to help him. Moses asked God to show him his way so that he would know and what to be able to do. And so God was going to answer his prayer. Now, like we said earlier, that word audacious, brave, willing to take a risk. This was willing to take a risk to go to God and ask God a question. You know, it's easy to ask everybody else a question, the normal person, but to go ask God a question Moses was taking a risk. Now in verse 13, Moses said, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Now Moses wanted to know that he find favor in the sight of God, and God was letting him know that, yes, Moses, you have found favor with me. Thank God that, uh, Moses had favor with God going to him and asking a request. Thank God that he did have favor. He had favor and he had grace. Now God told Moses in verse 14 that his presence will go with him. God himself will go with Moses and God also added that he would give him rest. Now there is a lesson to be learned to all of us. When you have God with you as your help, you have nothing to worry about or fret about. God promised not only to help Moses, but also to provide Moses with rest and strength throughout his journey. God assured Moses that he had found grace in his sight and God knew him by name because he had an intimate relationship with God. That's why it is so important that you develop your own intimate relationship with God. So who will also know you by your name. Moses knew how important this intimate relationship with God was. Moses knew that God would be with him. And that was so important. Now Moses said in verse 15, that if God's presence did not go with him, he did not want to go either. Moses did not want himself or the people to be out there on their own without God. Having God with you is so essential. I think about it as we are going through these trying times in this season. I don't know how people are trying to make it without God. I am so glad that I know God and I know that you're glad that you know him too. Aren't you glad that he is our everything? He is our supreme being. He is our source. He is our provider. He is our guiding force during these times that we are living in. God is our protector and our provider. So we are so glad that we as Christians, we have God in our lives during times like these. If we follow his word, it will bring us safely through this pandemic and through our entire lives. Trust God and he's going to bring you through everything if you keep your trust in him. So Moses had found grace in the sight of God and for everything that God was going to do as Moses being his servant. God told Moses, I will do this thing that you have requested. He would indeed go with Moses and the people 
and manifests his power and his guidance along the way. All because Moses had found grace in God's sight and the Lord knew him by name. And it was all done because Moses had a very special relationship with the Lord. And it was not because of the Israelites as a whole, because the Israelites did so many sinful things and, and practices of idolatry. So it wasn't because of them that God did it. He, they did it because God did it because of Moses, because of his relationship with the Lord and that he had found favor with God. And he granted the request to Moses that Moses asked. Now, since Moses knew that God was going to be with him, all along this way, on the way to the promised land with the Israelite people, Moses was fine with that. But Moses went a step farther. He asked another request. Moses asked God to show him his glory. This was a very personal request. Moses was seeking a deeper relationship of God that was going far beyond anything he had witnessed before. This was a big request that Moses was asking of God. We have to understand that God is a big God. And sometimes as, as we as Christians, we have to step outside of the box and be able to know that God is able to do all things. And we can't limit God on small things of what we ask him for. We got, sometimes we have to make our requests large because God will get all the glory. Whatever he does, he will get all of the glory. So we have to think outside of the box and don't, don't put God and limit him into a small little box. Let, let God be God who he is more than enough. We have to believe that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. So ask God. You'll be surprised what God will do for you if you just ask him, say, make your request known to him. And he said he would do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or even think. He's a big God. So again, God said to Moses, he would grant Moses his request, but God was going to do it in the manner that he decided to do it. In order to show Moses his glory he had to do it in a special way because he needed to protect Moses because God's glory, no man can see God face to face and live. Now, the way that God did it for Moses, he said he was going to make his goodness pass before Moses. The goodness refers to the moral perfection of God. If you notice in Psalms 119, verse 68, it tells us God is good and does good. His very character is summed up in his goodness, which in is in some way would be manifested visibly so that the splendor of his presence will be known to Moses. His very character is summed up in his goodness, which in some way would be manifested visibly so that the splendor of his presence would be made known to Moses. What Moses was about to see was going to be spectacular. God did tell Moses that his revelation would be limited. God told him that he, he cannot see his face. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, it says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Now, one commentator said it would be like looking directly at the brightness of the sun. If Moses was looking, it'll be like looking directly at the brightness of the sun and you know how bright the sun is so would our whole nature be destroyed by an unveiled sight of the brilliancy of the glory of god can you imagine god's glory just shining everywhere the brilliant sunlight um, that you would see the magnificent just array only when we are transformed in the perfect likeness of christ Will we see the Lord in the fullness of his glory? 
So to protect Moses, God gave his plan of how to do it for Moses to be able to see his glory. God told Moses that there was a place by him and he wanted Moses to stand upon a rock. And when his glory passes by, God would put Moses in the cleft of the rock, of the crevice of the rock, and then that his hand would go over him. Now, when it says when his hand would go over him, it's a figurative way of God saying that Moses was going to, God was going to shield Moses from seeing everything. God was going to shield him and Moses was only going to see what God allowed him to see. All this was going to happen as God passed by and his glory passed by. God's hand was going to shield Moses and protect him. So he would not be able to see anything but what God wanted him to see. And the only parts that he was going to see as God passed by was going to be the backside of God. Because if God did not do that, it will be instant death for Moses if he saw the face of God. God's compassion for Moses was demonstrated in his qualities and all of the requests that Moses had made. His compassion, God's compassion for Moses was there. God's character of faithfulness also assured Moses that he was going to carry out the plan for the Israelites into the promised land. God is faithful to his word. Aren't you glad about that? God is a faithful God. Others will walk off and leave you or whatever, but God is faithful to his word. It's all about God's character. God's character is faithfulness, love, demonstration, compassionate. He's there for you. He's always there no matter when you need him. He is there. He never will leave you or forsake you if you put your trust in Almighty God. However, Moses would see the back of God's manifested glory. This could be translated as the after effects of his radiant glory, which had just passed by. Moses probably was elated to be able to just, just see the presence and the radiance, glory of God, even though he couldn't see the face of God, just seeing the back parts of God as he walked through. Moses was happy and content with that. Just know he was in the presence of Almighty God. That takes us back to when we're in church and the presence of God is moving in the congregation and you just feel the presence of God. You just want to stay underneath that presence that you feel because you know, God is in the midst. He's walking up and down the aisles. You just, you just know he's ministering to his people under the anointing of almighty God. It's just something about being in the presence of an awesome God. We just truly thank God because his presence will keep you in that perfect peace that passes all understanding. We just thank God for his presence. When it comes, when he comes in a, in a mighty way, we know that he's ministering. He's, he's working with his people. He's, he's giving out blessings, just being in the presence of almighty God. And when you find favor and grace in God's eyesight, your requests will be answered. So we learn from this lesson today about how good God is and how he gives grace and mercy to those that he love and, and the favor that he'll give upon you if you just trust him and be able to walk in his ways and do what he says to do and follow his manners that he tells us to do. If we meditate on his mercy and meditate on his grace and all his other attributes that he has given to us, and as we do this wholeheartedly with our heart and love him fully, love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Just love God. When you love God, you won't do things to hurt him. You won't want to sin. You won't want to do wrong things. You won't want to have idols before him. You won't have to just, to just be uh, unequally yoked and you you want to be able to love him and you want to be able to please him and without faith it's impossible to please God so you gotta have faith you gotta know that God is in control 
We got to have know that God will make a way. You got to know that he trusts him through every situation. When you can't see your way through, you got to know that God has already made a way through. So develop that intimate relationship with Almighty God. It's a personal thing. No one can do it for you. You have to have your own personal, intimate relationship with Almighty God, just as Moses did. Then you can come boldly through the throne of grace and mercy and make your request known to Almighty God. So as Moses had an audacious request, he was willing to take a risk. He was bold to go to God because of his intimate relationship with Almighty God. So remember, we are God's children, and if we continue to trust God and we continue to put God first and make him the Lord of our life, God will make sure that he takes care of each of us. So we pray that you have enjoyed the lesson today. Moses' audacious request, God granted Moses all of the requests that he asked of him, but he did it in the manner that God wanted to be able to do it. So don't give your own um, perspectives of how this should be done. Try to tell God how to do it, when to do it, where to do it. Just give it to God and let God do it the way he wants to do it. So your request will be answered if you just give everything over to him. So I truly hope that you have enjoyed the lesson for today and to know that we can keep our trust in Almighty God. I pray that you have a blessed and glorious day. God bless. <music>